Uh, so if a member of the budget committee would like to wield the gavel for this meeting, um, now's your chance to volunteer. You? Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. in charge then. <laughs> Do you want to be the budget committee chair? Sure. All right. Uh, you are submitting yourself and it needs to be a second. It could be I'll anybody. I'll second it. All right. All Just in favor? Just tell me what I need to Aye. do. Aye. <laughs> Aye. We'll help you get, get sworn in. Right? Uh, you know, that's one of those things. So I've I've seen records of people being sworn in for a budget committee here. This is the only local government in the state of Oregon that does that because it's not actually required. Okay. Um, Happy to do it. Yeah. People who are elected do have to get sworn in, but legally there is no oath of office for a budget committee member, and it's not on our city charter. So. It's a volunteer position. So. Yeah. I know the city has done that in the past, but it's not a legal requirement. So uh, if we would like to do some sort of swearing in, there is an oath we can take, but... Yeah, swearing in or swearing at. Swearing in or swearing at. <laughs> you can swear at me anytime. Swearing you want. Uh, were there any no votes against Tammy to be the budget chair? Nope. Anybody opposed to her being the chair? Be careful. Nope. nope. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, good with it. Motion passes. Okay. Here is your cheat sheet. Yeah, we can move on to that if we want. So you want me to move this? Yep. Okay. So, committee chair, opening the public hearing. I will now open a public hearing to consider approving the budget for the fiscal year 2022 through 2023. The hearing will be con conducted as follows. I will make the opening statements and set any ground rules. This will be followed by disclosures of ex parte contact or conflict of interest on the part of committee members. Public testimony will be will then be given by others in support and finally by those who are opposed. Committee members may ask questions of the speaker at any point in the hearing. The public will have the opportunity to ask questions during their public testimony. Sets the ground rules. When testifying, please give your name and address for the correct record. For those of you testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible. Although this is not necessary in most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony to no more than five minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objections to budget committee jurisdiction in this matter? I don't see anything. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Does any member of the budget committee have a conflict of interest with regard to this respect? It would be no. Councillor Jackman. I have to <laughs> refrain from all this stuff, so. right? Yes, because of the country. Yeah, there's a conflict of interest. So. Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Budget Officer Alex McHadden will now present the proposal for a 2022-2023 budget to the committee. He can answer any questions. Yep, I can. I'm not good. <laughs> All right. So uh, first off, I'm going to say because this is a public meeting, budget hearing, we do have all of this information posted online. You have all been given copies of the budget, and you have all read it. Um, I don't really have anything big to add to what is in there, but because this is a public thing we are doing, I basically have to go over everything we did in writing already, but just out loud in public with the opportunity for anybody to come here and comment. So if anybody shows up, you know, that'll be the kind of thing we have to do. And that's why there is ample amounts of pizza and salad tonight. I also have root beer if anybody really, really wants it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I will try and keep this as exciting as we can because budgets are fun. Um, yeah, so first of all, I want to start out by talking about the most major change in this budget since last year. Um, uh, historically, we have divided our budget up into three different funds. It's the water fund, the general fund, and uh, the street fund. And uh, this year I'm proposing we combine those all into the general fund uh, for the main reason that uh, we have been, well, we've had different funds on paper. We have two bank accounts and all money either goes into one or the other and is dispensed from one or the other. Um, all of the funds we have have always been commingled and that has uh, made it more difficult to track. Um, the idea behind uh, creating different funds uh, in a budget is that technically it should make them easier to account for, but that 
really only works out when you have three different funds you're writing checks out of. If JD was in a separate uh, fund than me, all of his checks for his payroll would be written out of the water fund, and all of mine would be written out of the general fund, and that money would be tracked easily. Uh, we don't do that because this organization is so small. We end up having this weird hodgepodge of expenses being paid partially between several different funds at the same time, and that makes everything really wacky and weird. So uh, it is not a requirement for us to have these separate enterprise funds. Um, that is according to the state local government budget manual. Um, I made sure that was all, uh, all allowed. So that was the big change uh, that affects all of this that I wanted to oppose, uh, propose up front. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Okay. Good, good. Well, we will move on to our uh, general fund resources. So I'm uh, projecting we will have about um, 200000 uh, $203,200 cash on hand at the beginning of the year. I think it'll, it may be a little bit more than that. Um, I think we're, we're on target to meet that projection. Um, a big chunk of that is going to be uh, ARPA funds. So those are uh, funds from the American Rescue Plan Act that we will be uh, keeping from this year and then using next year in combination with the other half of the ARPA funds we will get. Um, the biggest portion of our cash on hand at the beginning is our state pool account, which will comprise the majority of it. Um, it'll be a little bit less than the 114000 we budgeted, but that will be made up for in the uh, checking account, which will have more than I projected. So uh, everything ended up looking good there. We also have $1,000 sitting there in designated funds uh, from the Dis Department of Land Conservation Development. Uh, that is money that can be used for, uh, I think there's like four pages worth of uh, examples of land use planning, uh, things that it can be used for. Anything from paying my wages uh, when I do anything related to last land use planning all the way to, um, you know, going through and scanning ordinances or just answering phone calls from members of the public wanting to know more about land use. So uh, that's what that money is for. And we move on. Uh, anybody questions about the uh, beginning cash? No? Okay. Uh, we move on to fees, licenses, permits, fines, assessments, and other service charges, and that is so long. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Call me slow. Oh, yeah. But um, the LGIP, yes. is that part of the 203-2000? Yes. Okay. So is all those funds in the 203-200, uh, is that um, that's usable money, usable dollars? Yes. Okay. So it's not like grant money or something like that that we're not anticipating so, yet? Yeah, I, I did. Money? Yeah, so that, that exactly. is everything we, monopoly, we will have right? in the bank day one that we can use. July 1. Yeah, July 1. Okay. Yep, so it is broken down. The ARPA funds and the DLCD <coughs> grants are designated, but we will be using them throughout the year. Okay, but the grants have already been designated, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. So the reason this next one is so long, fines, licenses, etc., is because the, LG, the state budget form is that long and has that many words in it, so we'll break that down a little bit. Uh, one of our biggest revenue sources is franchise fees. It's probably a little more than double our property tax. Uh, revenue every year. Um, we will be getting um, a lot of it from, uh, so Comcast does TV and internet, Century Tell does landline phone services, consumer power electricity, Republic Service for uh, waste disposal, and uh, Northwest Natural Gas for natural gas. Uh, so I'm projecting about $19,100 uh, from those revenue sources, and this is based on uh, historical uh, revenue from those. Um, I'm projecting 130000 in meter water sales. That's a little bit more than we got this past year, primarily because um, uh, we are getting these new meters installed, and they are way more accurate and uh, will show us just how much water people are using. So we can expect a little bit of a bump there. Uh, and the other ones are just uh, administrative service charges. Um, I didn't make any changes really from last year uh, because we don't uh, really make a whole lot of money on this, and we just kind of hope for the best um, on that. It's not a really big uh, part of how we make money. And what, what do those represent? The idea is that uh, if somebody pays a, uh, a, a fee for a construction application, it's supposed to pay for the time of uh, either me or JD, uh, anything we have to do to go out and do anything related to that. So if I have to call the county and talk to them about something, or if we have to go inspect a property, that is the idea behind that. We have to duplicate materials, that kind of thing. Any other questions? All right. Federal, state, and all other grants, gifts, allocations, and donations. So uh, we are going to receive what's called the second tranche of ARPA funds late in summer 2022. Uh, we had uh, we dodged a bit of a bullet being a state that chose to split their ARPA funds in half. Um, 
the federal government. So different states chose to get them all at once or get them in half pieces. And the federal government saw that um, a bunch of the states that decided to get it all in one fell swoop, uh, the local governments that got them weren't using them all, so the federal government just took it back. Just wonderful. Um, yeah, it was uh, something that the Senate Republicans insisted on doing to help pay for some expenditure of some sort. I think it was infrastructure. But that was that. Yeah, so uh, we have 38,300 we've received and are planning on uh, getting again this summer. So when combined, that's over $76,000 we'll be able to use for a few different uh, mostly public works programs. Um, we'll look at getting $25,000 in the state highway fund uh, taxes. Um, that's based on historical revenue trends. Um, revenue from taxes on controlled substances. Uh, the city doesn't have any marijuana shops, but we don't have a ban on marijuana shops, which means that we get marijuana revenue uh, from the state of Oregon. So uh, I think the combined cigarette and marijuana tax revenue we projected to get by the end of this year is about 450 so I'll project that again for next year. Um, if things are getting worse, so I imagine people are going to look for other avenues to de-stress. Um, and that goes the same with the liquor tax revenue, which is projected at 6200 $6, based again on this year. It might go up, might go down. People might be too poor, or they might be too stressed, and you never know. Uh, and the other one uh, is the uh, city voting to receive shared revenue. So that's something that the city has to vote to do every year, and we've been doing it all the way back to the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that uh, I was just... I don't know, it was really interesting coming from a special district into a city to find out that cities get so much money as participation prices just for existing. Uh, so the state just gives cities money, and it made me really <laughs> sad to think that I've been going so long, scraping for all, all the pennies I could find just to come here. I was like, oh, you want some more? Marijuana taxes. There you go. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, we voted that in. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We did. Yep, so, and the city also occasionally receives donations, so uh, we say we might receive some donations, we put in $1,000 there. And you also That's talked about um, working on grants as time goes yes. by. Yes, so working on grants will be a big thing that I, I look, work on next year, is because the city's natural revenue sources are unfortunately dwindling a bit. Um, we don't have a lot of, uh, our expenses are exceeding what we would normally get. Uh, specifically water acquisition. So we got to make sure that we're taking a little care to find more sources of revenue outside what we normally have because uh, things are not looking great in the long term. That is uh, really just a condition of most cities this size and most cities in general, even you know the grand where I came from, which is you know tens of millions of dollars in this budget, is just crying out for revenue because people want the city to do things and the city <coughs> ends up having to pay way too much to do uh, what the citizens want. So. And there actually is a website for grants. If you're ever bored some evening, you can yes. go start perusing and seeing if there's anything that we might can tell Alex about it. Yeah. I jokingly said, yeah, is there a website? And there is. Yeah. yeah there is. So, <laughs> yep, grants.gov. Believe it or not, that's just yeah. the thing. So. Yeah, we were looking at that the other day. There's could be some funds if we wanted to use the, the, the building across the street for some very specific things. There's some very specific money for that. Um, yes. Yep. So, yeah, don't worry. We're going to get that turned into a community center, I promise. Yes. Te slash technology center. Slash technology center, yeah. I think. Is it Rural Innovation Center or something I like think that? So, yeah. Yeah. So, what's that? Any other questions about this one? And a corner for a coffee shop. And a corner for coffee shop. Yes. Yeah. And a corner for uh, a coffee shop. Even a little coffee truck or trailer or something. Well, I, I want to go up there. I would walk up there every morning for yeah. a cup of coffee. I want to put a, a coffee shop in the brand new community center. Yeah. You know, go to one of them in town. By the way, cities are allowed to pass their own sales taxes, so mm -hmm. um, we could tax the sale of coffee and other stuff if we do that. So I know that's going to be popular. Uh, the one person here who owns the only business in town is probably not happy that we might start levying sales taxes. <laughs> we're not, no we're not going to do that unless we talk to you about it. Remember, he can also vote on your position. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You weren't supposed to say that. Technically, you and I are supposed to be reappointed every two years after every election. So, yeah. Oh, we better... Don't talk to him about the money or the other stuff. We'll do that later. Okay. Uh, the other resources besides property taxes, um, sometimes we get refunds and 
that's projected at $500, and then we also have uh, some dividends we get from the local government investment pool, so that's also projected at $500. It's not a whole lot. If we had more money, we'd get more. Um, it is more than a bank would probably get us, so there's that. Any questions? Okay. I, I never have a problem asking a question and showing myself incredibly stupid. So you just said current year property taxes were expecting 500, but it says 8,000. So what does that mean? Sorry, that was so the two ones were refunds and local government investment pool okay. interest. Yeah. Okay. Current year property taxes would be 8,000. Okay. okay. So sorry, the the item is all other resources except property taxes. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. So yeah, we're going to project $8,000 again. Um, we have a very small tax rate and very few houses here uh, that aren't worth a whole lot uh, altogether. So um, once again, it's going to be very small. I'm going to project $8,000 because that was about what we projected this year, and that's about as much as we got. So really, we need to be as encouraging as many people as possible to make additions and stuff to their property. Taxable improvements, if we make that process as smoothly and easy to go through as possible, making sure they're not using you know extra water, but <coughs> people are putting on decks and additions and all sorts There's of things. There's grant monies for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we we have an incentive to make the process of construction as easy and smooth as possible, so that people are making taxable improvements. We just need Evelyn County buying into that. Grants, right? <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> so yeah, um, the city I'm pretty sure is in compression. So if you'll familiar with the state tax law, um, we're not allowed to charge more than a certain amount. I think it's 50 cents per assessed thousand, and uh, we charge 44.52 cents per assessed thousand. So um, even if we did do the full 50, we're probably eating into somebody else's, because you have all have seen your tax bill, I'm sure, and you have all seen other things like the aquatic district and the school district. So uh, even if we put it to the full 50, we would still uh, be competing with them, and the state wouldn't give us the full amount uh, because there's only so much you can take out so that's why we're going at this current rate and projecting about eight thousand dollars any questions Very thorough. are we probably not the time to ask it never mind go for it i say are we um in the point where we can't build anymore someone asked me i forget what that's called there's a term urban for it. growth urban urban growth boundary. Boundary. you can and the yeah. city doesn't have an urban growth boundary oh. We do. My property yeah. had been approved by Lynn County to build 16 half acres. Wow. But you're, but, you're, but you're still at the city limits, though. Yeah, I'm in the city can, limits. I don't know about now, but it used to be when, he, when he's trying to annex property up by the Welder Tower, mm -hmm. we had a company that was going to buy that under the power lines. They were going to develop that up there. They wanted to annex about 15 or 20 acres in the city and put us in another city well, but the county would not allow us to enlarge our growth boundary because his large acreage, mine, Ray's, Nick Heineck's, because our city's got a charter can go down half acre lots. Well, we got a bunch of large, larger lots than that can be on half acre. So until those are all filled up, we cannot expand it further into the county. From what I understand, basically, yeah. going off what you said is your, um, the city development needs to be at 75% before you can um, apply to extend your urban growth boundary and because like I own four lots you know you have like 16 I got, four, I like, got four acres you know, Nick has like, got five acres so because we're not willing to, you got ten I think to break up we've got eight, you eight. know it's mm -hmm. anyway yeah. oh, yeah. Good to know. that's basically because <laughs> I'd asked this before um, about that and they're pretty much I can't remember who described it to me but it's 75 percent until your city is at 75 percent the county or state yeah. won't mm -hmm. allow the growth boundary to enlarge expand because so you still can have still build you still build more houses in the city, but people have got to break the lots down smaller. So does that mean that the people that are putting their mobile home in that is part of, part of the seventy five percent? It could be because that that's a pretty existing lot. That's, that's a pretty existing that's pretty lot. Existing right. lot. <clears throat> that's why we got a house up here that's got less than half acre because that was a pretty existing mm -hmm. lot back in the 1880s. Yeah. And the guy built a two story house. He couldn't have enough room to put a house and a garage on the lot. Okay. But it's a pre existing lot, Just so curious. he was allowed to build on that lot. That's even though it was undersized, the, the size because the fact it was already pre existing. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like Habitat for Humanity is going to be building here pretty soon, too. One right behind the school there. Could we traded both of those? What are they building? 
houses for people, Habitat Humanity build houses low for income. low income housing. That's what I was told about my little property down there too by Joe's is, you know, it was a little less than a half acre, but you know, you it, was, house on it, it was a yeah, yeah, pre-existing house that's grandfathered in. So. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Still, still got a septic on it, as a matter of yeah, fact, I need to get it out of there. Yeah. Mine is. Yeah. So. Yep. so I tried to get Lynn Cannon, who did unapproved mine for a subdivision, <laughs> because they're taxing me on a subdivision. Mm, yeah. My taxes, uh. I'm probably paying half of this bill. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My taxes are so high because it's a subdivision, mm. and they won't let it go back to a hobby farm mm. like it was before. You can't make it an agricultural farm or anything? They won't let me. Really? Because the people that I bought it from mm -hmm. spend a lot of time and money getting Lynn County to approve oh, that, geez. but then they couldn't find a developer to be interested in the property. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works. I don't need to be just one parcel one time. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Did you take us off track? This, this pre, <laughs> pre existing. We do that often. You learn to It's valuable information. <laughs> it, it really is. It's interesting. It is very interesting. And I actually gave the city of Sotoville a quarter of an acre. Oh, I thought you were going to sell it. there you go! <laughs> when you first come up the hill, there's our pot farm. No, <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> That's one way to make money. <laughs> yep, sells that. <laughs> you know, we grow rocks and soda. Maybe we could sell it. Give me a Because it's just a big freaking rock. Petrified. I didn't want to pay the taxes on a separate tax. Anyway, so that's how that goes so far. All right, all right, sorry. Like we go. Okay. Thanks, Adina. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I just put it on my shoulders. I, I got like it. it when she asks <laughs> questions. Exactly. Always the fool. Good. Get her hard time. All right. Uh, the next one is the general fund requirements. So, so we know the uh, the way that they label these things. A resource is any money that we get, we use to spend on stuff, and a requirement is the expenditure. So. That's what that means when we talk about resources versus requirements. So because everything is being folded into the general fund, uh, it is important that we all understand how money will be spent within the general fund. Uh, general funds, so any fund really, can be split into either departments or programs. So it's just me and JD each wearing three different hats technically at the same time. Uh, so we don't need to have three different departments. Uh, instead, what the uh, state has us do is divide the... Uh, the fund into programs. So what was considered the general fund is now being called the administration program within the general fund. The streets fund is going to be the streets program and the water enterprise fund will be the water enterprise program all within the general fund. So we started off uh, with the admin program so a few different things. Personnel services really is the bulk of the administrative administration uh, program expenditures. Right now, the mayor receives a deduction of $30 from their uh, monthly water bills. I did find out today that uh, all city councilors are technically entitled to be paid $1 per meeting they attend. Uh, I want back pay. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, I looked at uh, Roger. We actually owe him about $1,300 for all the meetings he's attended uh, since 1981. Pizza's fine. Yeah, yeah right? He uh, can't be bought with food. <laughs> there you go. Don't eat the city. Yeah. The mayor has also, uh, mayor, the mayor gets $3 per month um, rather than just $1. Yeah. And I am uh, allowed wow. to, uh, I, you can either get it as a check quarterly or I can just pull it out of petty cash at a meeting. So, <laughs> uh, Did you need to tell hey. JD how much he can get for gas? Oh, yeah. The other, I already know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we do have a lot of these old things on uh, on the books still. $2, yeah, I'm $5 a month. Yeah. Whoa. Yep, maximum uh, amount uh, that the public works director actually, the current title we have under ordinance still is public works supervisor. It was a city marshal slash street commissioner, but that was changed. So uh, our public works director is uh, uh, being paid substantially more than the old uh, $8 per month. Uh, we pay him uh, a nice living wage. Uh, along with health insurance. Um, my salary is supposed to be $10 per month, uh, but I make a little bit more than that as well. <laughs> Just a little. Uh, so, 
-hmm. Yeah, we could say that this isn't in compliance with city ordinance, but city ordinances are wildly out of compliance with applicable state and federal law here, so we're going to ignore those mm -hmm. uh, at the risk of uh, violating the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution. Or okay. so try to get them changed so we can get it to what's updated. They still got go. hangings in there or what? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. We do have our own city criminal code. Uh, we found the ordinance that uh, could have been used to surreptitiously uh, disallow interracial marriage uh, from the 1950s that is still technically on the books. So, and there's the ban on skateboarding. So there's all sorts of interesting things that are technically still in force here that do need to be removed uh, because we are better people, I think, in this 21st century. Um, yeah. So... The $30 towards the mayor's water bill, isn't that kind of outdated? Um, that wasn't. That hasn't been put in that long ago, really. Yeah. No. No. It was uh, back when I was mayor the first time back in the early nineties. I I supposed to get ten dollars a month, and then it. And it then when uh, let me see who was it? Um, Karen. No, wasn't Ronda. Karen. Um, no, when Susie. That's no, but he had. Harrington, Brady, Brady. Oh, Brady Harrington yeah. became mayor. Yeah. He got it raised up to thirty-five dollars a month to pay his water bill. Quickly, rent the had the property right across the street over here, so it went up to thirty-five dollars a month. For thirty dollars a month, or like that, to pay his water bill at the time. And then the water bill went up higher than that. But, so, yeah. But in the last time I was mayor for a year and a half, I think I got a whole seven side total. I left my big that old paperwork. I got thirty-five dollars for a year and a half getting mayor. And I was public works and mayor for the wow. city at that time. I went out in the house that he lives in <laughs> when there was an ice glacier around that pump house out there because the city, because the well broke and sprung a leak upon the seat of water. So I was out there with an axe chopping through that at one o'clock in the morning to find the leak that was actually this well. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Lots of water. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, personnel <laughs> services. Um, those are, all the numbers are written down in there beyond that. Um, so, um, $1,000 of my salary in the general fund program uh, is going specifically to be paid for by the Department of Land Conservation and Development. And, um, yeah, that'll be used for if any, if I have to do any land use planning stuff during this next year, I'm going to have to do at least $1,000 worth of it. So that shouldn't be too hard. We've got a, land, a lot of land use resolutions and ordinances that need to be updated. So we'll work through that. We just need to make sure it's noted in the budget. That's what it's going to be used for. Um, so the other thing we had to do is uh, replace the health benefits uh, requirement with health benefits and paid family medical leave insurance. This is a new fun thing uh, that everybody is going to have to deal with uh, at the latest starting by January of next year. Um, every, every employee is going to have to have 1% uh, of their uh, wages deducted um, and put into the state uh, PFMLI program. Um, the employer, or the employee, is supposed to pay. Is supposed to cover 0.6 percent of that, and the city covers the other. Uh, or see, yeah, sorry. The city, the employee covers 60 percent of that, and the city covers 40 percent. Um, so we had to add a little bit of money to uh, that line item to make that up. Um, so what happens is if the city decides they don't want to pay uh, their portion and have me and JD send the full 1% of it uh, to the state of Oregon Treasury, you're allowed to do that, but it, uh, it, the, for the city would forfeit its right to get grants to cover the cost of paying for our replacements if we're out. Uh, so uh, that could end up costing a bit more. I know it's... Neither me and JD are super happy about that um, because, you know, it's just more and more that's being taken out of our paycheck. Um, but it is, it's something we can't really get around. The one thing the state says is that if you can find your own alternative program, then you can do it that way. Uh, the League of Oregon Cities through uh, City County Insurance Services isn't creating a program like that. So um, I don't know if anybody's really interested in investing in that. So I can continue to look for things. Um, this next six months to see if there is any alternative, but I don't expect there will be anything, especially because CIS doesn't want to invest in it. They're just going to drive people to, to Salem to do that thing. It's like any insurance. You pay a lot, and some, mostly you don't ever use it, but when you do use it, you'll, you're happy you have it. Exactly. They tell you you're not covered. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. There you go. Mm -hmm. okay. So wearing blue, mm -hmm. you're not covered that day. How does that? Okay, so say... 
JD's working and then he gets sick and he's covered by Brownsville, right? Yeah. How does that work with that situation? Uh, in that situation, um, the city can apply for a grant to pay for the cost of somebody from Brownsville who is doing that work for long term, as long as the city is participating. Okay. If the city doesn't, then we have to find another way to pay for it. Okay. Yep. And there are some uh, specific use cases that the state lined out, and those are written in your budget packet. Um, you know, we, we can't just use it to go to a video game convention. Sorry. Oh, come on. I know. It would be fun. But, yeah, there are there are some very specific uses for it. So that's that. Any questions about PFMLA? That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I didn't make any changes in the materials and services portion of this from last year. So the last one is capital outlays. Uh, we did remove the, the City Hall Community Center line item because... Those funds evaporated a long time ago, and there was really no extra 45000 to just put in there again. I know. It's a shame. You see, and I even well. circled that because yeah. I wanted to talk about it. Well, let's talk. What would you like to say? Well, I, I would just like to know where the money went, you know? I mean, all the time that we were doing the park, we got the 45000 We got the 45000 And then it just disappeared. And not only that... I have to ask this question out loud. Who in the world charges $58,000 for your help, your help, my help? Did you come and help with the park? Who writes off $58,000 just for volunteer services? They, they done that so they could <clears throat> match. Grant budget is from the government. Is why they did that. That's why they charged them that much for labor. Oh, yeah. Oh, and to yeah. match government resource funds. It was part of the grant yeah. requirement yeah. that you document they gave, the hours. They gave us so much, and we had to match funds with But we lied. Well, oh, yeah. so the IRS... We didn't lie. Someone else lied for us. <laughs> yeah, somebody. The one Don't say that on a recording, please, <laughs> until you have been advised by your legal counsel about what actually happened. I'm, I'm just saying we yeah. may have been lied to, which I, I didn't don't work there, so I'm not sure exactly what happened, no, you but I didn't. know what it did. I know... <laughs> Yeah, yeah no. that's the thing. If we we can speculation isn't going yeah. to be really good no, for us as a body. There is an answer out there, but it's not wise to talk yeah. about something until council is advised. Okay, about. so but it's good to know the IRS does consider volunteer hours for everybody in this country to start at at least twenty. A value of I think twenty four dollars and twenty five cents per hour. Yes. Yeah. So you know if anybody's paying twenty you know twenty five dollars an hour. Technically volunteering that much amount of time that actually can add up pretty quickly. And that's yeah. why it was stated to us. And, and maybe was, that's what I didn't. Know, it was, yeah. I mean, what it, yeah. the price was exactly. about volunteering services. Yeah. It's a shame because it was gotten a grant for covering work. Work. Well, well, you were know we did. all the time spent. Yeah. That would have been nice. Yeah, right. Well, there was three of us because yeah. somebody was had a pencil and was writing yeah. like this <laughs> and charging as much as both of us. That's a funny <laughs> bit is that. The, uh, your your volunteer wage labor is technically three and a half times your minimum wage, so. So we're it was not prevailing try wage, right? Even I mean, that's what it was explained. Prevailing wage is yeah. for our volunteer time. So, whatever union costs for construction workers were at the time, that's what they were charging. So. Yeah. So you looked for the forty-five thousand. <clears throat> yeah, we we went through it a bit with the accountant. Um, it was just deposited into the operating checking account and just. Kind of uh, commingled with everything else and just spent without uh, a whole lot of thought. So that almost makes me um, want to cry because mm -hmm. that would have done yeah. everything that we wanted to do to that building. Mm -hmm. So the sad news well, it would have gotten it would a have good been, start. Yeah, it would have been really good. And building, that's but what it was supposed to be for. Yeah, I mean, there the the sad thing is that all right, if we were going to consider it to have been there the whole time, it has the operating checking account has dipped below that number several times since we got it. Did not know that. Yeah. So. So the sad news is it wasn't used designated for that, but the good news is we used it for operating. It should have been put in. Well, yeah, oh, that's that's not was. good news. No, that's, but I mean overall, thoughts. it was not. Yeah. It was not the correct news. We sh we should not have done that, but this is what occurred. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's. Um, I'll keep my mouth shut about all this steak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got my pizza. Pizza. <laughs> pizza. Yeah, yeah. Hey, when you when you have a capital expense or capital revenue, you can't just spend that on right. any other type of uh, requirement. It has to be spent on capital. And we won't do that on. Yeah. yeah, it's very likely that it was not spent on capital. I know the so. counselors at the time was told that the money was put in a separate fund. It was in a I separate was fund. It was a line item. Line. Told me it. Yeah. Yeah. I was told that it could not be put in a special fund because I frisked for that when I was in council. When we first sold that property over there, I pushed for the fact that it was going to be dedicated strictly for that. And I was, we were, I was told by a city administrator that we could not put it in a special account. Well, like I say, it was a separate line item. It was it the line item on, the, on budget, but it was not put in a special account for that fund. No, apparently yeah. not. It if was, it could, yeah, it should have been put in its own bank account. But she, she said she, said she so couldn't do it. So that's what she, I was told by our city administrator at the time. That's not true. Well, there was lots of fancy line yeah. items. I was when I was on the budget committee, and I questioned a lot of it. And I just always got the answers. That's just how we have to put things in there to keep things. Yeah, going. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. and no a more, lot no of more. no, you can't do that. Yeah, hmm. at the very least, it could have been put in our state pool accounts, but it wasn't. We have we proved that we know it was put in the um, it was put in the, the checking account, and we have no record of a transfer anywhere oh. close to that. But we got to move always. forward and hopefully yeah. you rebuild it and get us back to a state where we can do something uh, with it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Property uh, wise, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions about the administration program? No. All right. I know. Very sad one. The next one is the streets program, which is the best one. The It's, it's probably going to benefit the most from being incorporated into the general fund. Uh, because the way we have technically been funding the streets program in the past have been these fictitious opening balances and um, mm -hmm. $25,000 worth of uh, state highway taxes. Again, all the, the, oh, the beginning and ending funding amounts were just kind of created willy-nilly because everything was in the same bank account. Uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't really your... Yeah, it was... It wasn't really kept track of. So now we're putting it here, and we know what's going in there, and we know what's going out. Uh, there aren't going to be any fictitious beginning and ending balances based on how I feel that day. So I think, uh, I think that's the best thing. That is the best thing. Exactly. Well, that's what, when I came up and was part of Budget Committee, streets have always been my number one complaint. And so you just said, you know, these fish, fictitious line items. I'm like... Because I didn't know it, and I saw the. I was like, "You guys got twenty five thousand dollars for streets? Like, my street has never been repaired once, other than what I do. Anyway, I'm just I'm glad to see something. Good point. Yeah, no, we will we will be doing some good things, I think, to the streets this year. Uh, the only change really in the personal services. So there was because we have these three different ways money has been grouped in the past. Um, the uh, the city recorder's budget is technically supposed to be paid 60% out of admin and then 20% out of the other two, but it hasn't been funded that way. So I did change, I rearranged the numbers this year, so we're paying me the same amount uh, for this coming fiscal year, but the correct amount is coming out of the general fund. Uh, so which means the general fund's line item to pay me has increased, while the other two uh, in uh, streets and water have decreased accordingly. So that's the the only thing. If you look at the numbers, they are going to be different for that specific reason. And did you amend those to make a option of raise? Uh, there is a little bit of extra in there. I mean, there's a little baggy. It's it's baggy enough so we could raise it a little bit if we wanted to. Because I just want to put it out there that when I was talking to Alex, I said you did put in there the potential for a raise after you've been here for a year and if you're doing a good job. And he said, no, the city needs the money. And I don't think that's right. No. We give a raise if we can. Um, I think that you need to. Based on merit. Based on merit, absolutely. Oh no, we do. You do that. We're <coughs> forced to by the special meeting. Special meeting. No, so I just want to. <laughs> I want to give recognition to Alex yeah. too. Okay. I mean, he didn't, wouldn't turn the heater on when we eat. He thought we were totally broke, <laughs> and for this, he was not even going to put that in there. So I think that just shows a great commitment to our city, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that too. And yeah, yeah I agree. That's yeah. what I was trying to say the other night. Hey, Alex, it. can you kind of explain the capital alley? Yeah, so capital outlay is really supposed to be spent on the purchase of stuff. They want infrastructure, they want buildings, they want equipment, they want cars, and they want really more expensive kinds of things. So programmable, lo programmable logic controller, mm -hmm. that is something that would be a, a capital That's expense. grant money, right? Yeah. All capital outlays is grant money. Uh, right? It doesn't have to be. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really, it really comes from uh, any money related to stuff. 
and big stuff. Like, though, as I was going to start out with the program, programmable logic controller. That would be something we purchased under capital expense. A new computer would probably be more under materials and services because it's. Okay. I mean, c computers are practically commodities now. So basically, They're, it's capital expense then. Yeah. Yep, that's what those are for. Yeah, personal services is for people and things related to people. So that's where they trap money for the tractor, the log that. See, backhoe yes. should be. Yeah, going I was going to say yeah. that would yes. have been a capital outlay. But yeah, I mean, that is actually covered in a slightly different one. There is a debt service column specifically for that, but it's noted that it's, you know, it's, it's stuff. Yeah. If right. we were just going to pay for that outright, then we would probably put it in there as a capital outlay. I just outlay. Had a, always had a hard time understanding that particular line. Gotcha. It's like capital outlays always kind of confuse me, and every time yeah. I've tried to ask for it in the past, like I say, it was always <laughs> kind of associated with grant money. It's like... Mm. So it's not real money like we were talking about earlier. It's yes. kind of monopoly money that we're... So why are we putting it in as a line item if it's not a tangible yeah. account, money, funds? Yeah. Anyways, I just want to get clarification. All right. Yeah, capital. Capital is the fun stuff. It's the stuff. It's really what they want. You know, lots of infrastructure is capital and Got it. big expenses. Maybe um, purchase. Yeah, like uh, the building across the street. That would be a, a capital thing. That 45000 those were capital outlay funds that probably weren't spent on capital outlay. Right. So. But it can be grant money, but it can be city Yeah, uh, it could be either grant well. or city resources. It's not restricted. Okay. Just those large purchases. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, so last year we put $100,000 to fix the Vine Street project. That was actually canceled before the budget uh, was even written. But it was still put in there, so uh, needless to say, we're not putting in this non-existent project anymore. So we're cutting it by a hundred thousand. Sorry, um, we're not getting it anyway. We're going to put forty-six thousand six hundred from ARPA into street grading. So we're going to do some street grading this yeah. year. We're gonna we're gonna do something <laughs> well, with the roads. When you told me the prices, I was like, I'll pay for that out of my pocket. Yeah, right. <laughs> five hundred, five hundred, six hundred bucks. Get my street fixed. Yeah, man. Freaking, I make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the truck is make it down the road easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's talking street. about outlays, expenditure, expenses. Yeah. We could you do? I know I could do it, but I want you to do it okay. because it's part of the city. All right. Um, I noticed a couple of times I've gone through other cities, and I've seen at the entrance of their city where it says twenty-five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. that they have these solar, you're going faster than 25 miles an hour. It's a county road. I understand and I agree yeah. with you 100%. We could pay for it. You have to sit, you have to, the county will pay for it. It's a big problem. Yeah, they, well, by God, I'll that. go talk to the county then. Didn't we already try to do that? Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. We did. We but tried to talk about putting flashing yellow light like Wally Lou's got on it, and that doesn't work either. Well, I won't allow it. Did you hear about the newest accident that happened yesterday? Right, right down to. Yeah, at the Spring end of Spring Soderville, and, uh, Soderville Road in Spring, Spring Street. Street. Yeah. Was that Mr. Vandeveer? I'm not, I don't know who it was, but he took the ditch instead of taking out the old lady in the car. Well, he still hit the car. I know he did, yeah. but he didn't have a choice. Yeah. So I would like, and I'm I'm an advocate for this. I am so tired. There's two things I'm tired of. I'm tired of the people going. I mean, mainly the people that live up on Middle Ridge. They think it's okay. For, what would happen if we went up to their <clears throat> yard and did burnouts and shit like that? How would they feel about it? Seriously. And then the other thing is, the dump trucks. They buzz by our house, and our neighbor Shan is out there, because he's retired now. The log trucks, I was out there. And he yells at them, slow down! Is that the trash truck? Call no, the company. No, no, not the trash truck. Truck. Dump trucks. Log trucks. Oh. Log trucks. Dump trucks. Log trucks, dump trucks. They go by our house. Doing 45 miles an hour. It's a 25 mile an hour zone. County Street, also. Are you calling me the sheriffs no, and reporting that? The, you know what? I've seen it's a county, county out here every single day for the I last believe. four or five days. They just drive through and they look. They don't do nothing. Occasionally they'll put a, <clears throat> you're going faster than 25 down there. 
In my past life, I've actually gone to the sheriffs yeah. and talked about how they could increase revenue by writing tickets, by doing mm -hmm. that. And they were out there with their little gun. Sometimes it's just a motivational factor. Well, maybe I need not to bitch <coughs> about it and go do something about it. Yeah. Then. I'd go to the sheriffs. We tried to get flashing lights we and have the reader board and stuff like that. The yeah. council has in the past. And the county would go for it. We need to keep doing it. I tried to get them to issue our own tickets for our own city, and they said we couldn't do that. I wanted to increase revenue. <laughs> we used to have a, we used to have I wanted to add to the budget line. Add it? Exactly, right? I Ticket. Would just, we could figure that out. A photograph. Alan, <laughs> melt don't till. we still have our own something? Alan, right? there, there are some city roads, and we could do that um, on a few city-owned roads. I would, I would like you to find out how much they are. What, the tickets or the N the flashing things oh, with yeah. the with the I got a catalog just with okay. those the other day in the mail. Okay, yeah, but if you're doing flashing lights and stuff, something you got to consider too is getting power to them. Solar, solar. 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 Right, if you're doing solar, yeah, but, yeah. So uh, that's the only way I go. Yeah, there's they, really no point to having them because they have no. There's no way of enforcing them. Right, there's nothing to do with it. The kids see those and they use them as. Oh. Practice, see how fast they can go. <laughs> You're going to encourage more speeding by putting those in. They also, they also have photo photo cameras like Portland, like that, that have they can clock your speed, take less pictures, less plate, and send them a ticket to mail. I get it. I California's got them. Portland's got them. Seattle, Salem's got them. First, if if it's county, it's not up to us to. I don't mean to. to right. No, no, I I get to, it. To waste money, time researching it if it's something that's not the cost of it, and us doing if it's not even feasible for. So to be able to do it. So, There's a but there. But I haven't finished. But that doesn't stop anyone from going to the county and saying, I'm board, a citizen. Commissioners. Yeah. Going we to have, though. I mean, we, well, I know we did that when Roger's yeah. wife got killed. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. We so tried very hard. Too. Some guy blew through the stop sign over the speed limit going Cascade Drive, so he slowed the speed limit down going on Soto Road because God guy blew the stop sign and killed my wife. Yikes. Like yes. Yeah. Yeah. We pushed it very hard, and we got told no. That's what, and you know what they said? Well, we have to take into account how many accidents and how many people have been killed at that intersection before so, we'll do anything. It's one too many. One so anyways, is one too with that. many. Yeah. No, the reason why I'm just, asking is what's wrong with, depending on how much they are, I'll pay for the sucker. But can we? But can city, we? Or can we? Put, is that something exactly, we can do on the, on the county exactly. roads? Exactly. That's what I want to find out. A, issue yeah. a point of order. It's a no. Um, yeah. Our Sorry. Councillor Hensley kind of hinted at this a second ago. Okay. If we feel that conversation is taking a little too long, uh, we can ask yeah. our presiding officer to okay. gavel out and go, okay, next yeah. thing. So on to the next subject. Next, next subject. Next okay. 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 Sorry. So, yeah. yeah. We'll revisit. There, we, have, we have lots to do as a city, and we yeah. will yeah. Maybe. get it all done. <laughs> we just I'm want to make sure we're... Maybe in another meeting. It's not the budget. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> All right, next up is the Water Enterprise Program, if we had no other questions about streets. So last year, uh, the city in total ran a $917,000 budget shortfall because we wrote in $917,000 that we didn't actually end up getting. So uh, thankfully, we didn't spend any of that. Uh, but still, you got a, 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 a prudent budget, budget officer is not going to put in a million dollars that's not there. Um, you should usually should know that there's not going to be a million dollars beforehand. Uh, so the budgets for water is down by eight hundred seventeen thousand dollars. I'm sorry, uh, if you were expecting an extra wow, eight hundred right, grand, yeah. uh, it wasn't only gonna, it wasn't going to come. So, yeah, we did get thirty four thousand from USDA for water stuff, but we're probably not going to get that again. So that's we're that. not going to get that again. It was used. It was grant money for us for the project, and it's not going to be recouped. So, yeah. Water sales. So the water meter sales is entirely appropriated for the water enterprise program. Remember, that's about $130,000 we're projecting for the next year. Um, we think revenue is going to increase as a result of installing more accurate water meters. So that's good. Something to consider for maybe not this budget, but future budgeting is set aside 5% or so of what we paid for the meters. That way in 20 years, 15 years when you have to replace them, you're not scrambling for money to do it again. Gotcha. Uh -huh. There's supposed to be a program along that line in place already. So we follow the uh, the Government Accounting Standards Board's standards. We've adopted that as a city, and that includes a 3% reserve. So that is included in the budget. We will cover that. 
later. But we are we are putting money away. So if the council <coughs> wants to, for example, put the equivalent of five percent away, we had to use all of that money up front because that was really the terms of the grant. Um, but if we want to put the equivalent of that away, we definitely can. So um, that would be something we do in a future budget. So thanks for that. And since um, we're talking about water meters, um, yeah. JD said that the new system has already alerted him to two leaks. Uh, two today, two the other day. Yeah. Is that just phenomenal? I mean, before wow. it was like the bill of somebody knew, or we saw the bill. That's just somebody opened their meter today and it showed a rupture. So. Yeah. So uh, they're locked out now. Their what? Their meter's locked off now. <laughs> they haven't paid their bills since last December. Yeah, so. they had a bad leak. Told them not to use it until they fixed it. They decided oh, it's been a while, so they turned it on today. I went and locked it off. I caught it because the Cause the it, new system told me they did it. Oh, they turned it on. Huh? Yeah. There was a 1,000 gallon leak today there too. Yeah. Right? What? So not only do they have a back I already bill, came for it itself. There we go. It's great. A damn criminal yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't we have an ordinance or a program that says it, uh, says it's not tamper with their own water meters? Yeah. You can't do that. So. It's against the law or against the right. for anyone to turn off the corp stop. They have to have their own shut off on their side. Of the they do. They did have their own shut off, and that was part of the agreement I made with them four months ago was they could use ours once to remove their meter or their valve because their valve was leaking by yeah to replace their valve but they haven't replaced their valve yet they turned ours on today and they haven't replaced the leak because there's a big pool of water in the corner of the yard it's good thing you don't know how many times i've turned mine off <laughs> yeah. well be careful with the new valves because they're no, okay. plastic and okay. they will okay. snap a little bit and then it will be an ugly mess Right. Anyway, so uh, personnel services, um, again, the, the city recorder wage has been decreased in this one because the admin one increased, so it's the only real change there. Uh, materials and services, uh, so these compose the largest portion of our water enterprise program. Uh, most of the, the uh, requirements are similar. Uh, we increased water acquisition to 60000 Last year we budgeted 20000 and spent 85000 but I have word that we're going to spend a little bit less on water acquisition this year uh, because we just signed a contract with uh, Ray Jackman Repair. That should uh, save us some money. Uh, accordingly, Councillor Jackman will be abstaining on the vote for this budget and any uh, supplemental budgets in the next fiscal year. But and hopefully all this rain <laughs> helps us. That'd be nice. I think it already has. I think we'd already started budgeting for water last year by this time, hadn't we? Yeah. I thought yeah, we did. I thought we already started trucking it in by this time. Yeah. Not yet. Year we were, yeah. The end of June we started. Was it the end of June? Yeah. Um, let's see, lastly, so $30,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act is going to be appropriated to purchase a new programmable logic controller. JD, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, and Jeff, jump in too. Yes, mm -hmm. Councilor Hanson can tell you more about it. Oh, okay. Uh, just our system out there right now is ran on an antiquated uh, PLC processor. Um, the interface with the uh, HMI is also obsolete. Uh, so what they're proposing is getting um, a newer processor, which is supported, because uh, the stuff they have out there right now is no longer supported. The only way they can get parts and bits and pieces for it is if either I can scrounge around the mill or get it off of eBay. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, that's the proposal is to try to get uh, Studio 5000 software, uh, at least an L7172 processor. And I'm going to get with JD here in the near future and go through there and figure out what all cards and stuff that we have in there. Because a lot of the uh, uh, meters and stuff that interface with the wells are analog signals and stuff. So, you know, we got to make sure that the hardware stuff that we get is compatible. Uh, there will be some programming cost involved. Uh, you know, if he goes with his existing programmer, uh, which his name, by the way, is also Jeff. Uh, yeah, well, well, he's the one that's been supporting it for a number of years and stuff. And like I say, the interface between the touchscreen that they have out there right now, that also needs to be upgraded because it's a uh, panel view 6, which is obsolete. Uh, at least got to go to a panel view 7. So basically it's just, you know, renewing the whole system. And... 30,000 should be 
comparable, but the way prices and stuff are going up and as hard as things are to come by, you know, I mean, most things that I'm ordering at work right now is taking anywhere from three to six months, especially, you know, anything that's electronic mm -hmm. that requires, you know, any semiconductors or anything like that in there just because electronics are so and far shit. out. So even when we do order it and get our money set aside for it, it may be a, a process to get it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, let's see, I ordered a freight drive in, I think it was November, mm -hmm. and it's still not supposed to be here until next November, so we're having to wait one year just to try to support our operations now. So. And uh, will this be equipment that will be sustainable for 20, like 20 years or something down the way? Like, we're going to buy something <laughs> new, and, new enough that it will be updatable? It will yeah, be for the Studio 5000 software, something that, you know, they'll probably, you know, um, keep for the next 10 to 15 mm -hmm. years. Seems like about every 15 years is whenever Rockwell goes and creates another language that you need to go in there and, and uh, rewrite all your software mm -hmm. to keep up to date with. But as it stands right now, um, you know, the stuff that I was just talking about, is going to be sustainable for, for a while. I know the processors, they're up to, you know, the L80 series all the way up there. So they're at least 10 versions up. But you got to get to an L72 to be able to commu communicate with the studio software gotcha. okay. that's out there right now. That's mm -hmm. the bare minimum because, you know, the <laughs> Rockwell is a, they're a very sneaky little group and they're as large as they are for a reason. I, and once you get committed to them, you're you're committed. Okay, that's so. a good description for me. I just was no, okay. curious, you know. Uh, Thank you. Good bit <laughs> Sorry. here Don't to know around. about um, the money that is going to be available. Um, the water meter project was a little less expensive than we expected, so there's about an extra 5,500 additionally we can play with. Well, so that can still gonna, still gonna have to spend a little bit. They got to have a plumber come in. Yeah, yeah. Complete five over six of them. Yeah, so there's there's going to be a little bit money probably of that left over next year. So some of that could go to paying towards the uh, renewal subscription fees for managing the meters, and a little bit of that could go to the logic controller. You know, every every penny is going to count. So well. Yeah. So just so we know, that's that thirty thousand for the PLC is going to come from ARPA. So thank you, Uncle Sam. Any questions about water? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So the last one is resources and requirements not allocated. Uh, so we have $10,000 for our debt service, uh, one for an IFA loan and the other for a tractor and accessories. Um, we've paid a small amount of the tractor loan every year. Um, I think in the future, there's only like $8,000 left, so like I think next fiscal year it might not be a bad idea to just pay yeah. for it. So we're done. Who knows, we might be able to just do it off. Yeah, but that's that's the way it's been paid. We've been paying a little bit every year for the last few Can we years. We find a grant. For Eighty that? bucks a month or something like that. That's pretty. I think it's two hundred thirty. Because two hundred thirty. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't a lot. There's that. Uh, mm -hmm. The operating contingency is sixty-three hundred, and then the three percent GASP reserve uh, for this fiscal year is equivalent to thirteen thousand nine hundred. That leaves us with an unappropriated ending fund balance of seventy-four thousand um, nine hundred fifty. Um, this is 88,000 below what we're starting with, but we recall that uh, um, 39,000 of what we're starting with is from designated funds. So um, this is not a, a good place for us to start over next year. Um, we won't be spending as much during the fiscal year following this uh, because um, we have fewer designated funds that are supposed to go toward these big, big things. Um, but we are going to have to hustle to start studying other revenue sources, especially grants. Uh, to figure out how to pay for a lot of things. Um, the the city's revenue sources have been kind of on a decline for quite some time, sad to say. Um, we're, we're kind of at the, the natural conclusion of how things have been going. Is uh, This is when the, the bill comes due for not having a whole lot of diversified revenue. JD? Did you put in the thousand dollars for pressure washing? Yes, that was uh, that was put in there. So we do have to do some pressure washing for uh, the, the tanks up there. Um, we figured out the rental costs and how much it would take to get there and all that, and uh, we ended up being able to fit it in. I think it's an extra thousand dollars to add and to then the, the next budget year. We're going to have to have divers come in and inspect the tank. 
Yeah. Find the grant for that too. How often does that happen? Five years. It's only five years. Because yeah. it just doesn't seem like it was that long ago that we had divers in. I mean, geez, time, time flies. flies. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> another good thing to note is that you know there are still other ways we can go and get money. Um, ordinarily, um, you're not supposed to take money out of your unappropriated ending fund balance. Um, your your reserve for future expenditure can be pulled out. Uh, without there being a big emergency. Um, your operating contingency is for emergency funds. And then again, your unappropriated ending fund balance, you really don't want to touch unless there is something cataclysmic happening. Um, the translator district where I worked previously, we used our unappropriated ending fund balance to uh, buy all the equipment to create a television station because suddenly <coughs> it was illegal to have public meetings and everybody still need to have them. Uh, so, well, we don't have a lot of contingency as it is if it's only 13,000. So. Yeah. So... That's what we do with uh, the inappropriate ending fund balance. So the onus is on me and to uh, really look for grants and other ways to diversify revenue. If anybody else here can look for things, look for grants, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, we'll be starting off with less next year. Um, I don't think it, revenue is going to change a whole lot the next coming fiscal year. Um, but uh, less money up front means uh, less money left over, I think. So. It'd be nice to do as much as we can with grants. Yeah, as much as we can with grants, we'll be hustling. Uh, I also have an economic development uh, proposal that we'll look at too. Um, we we'll have to think, amend our comprehensive plan, which I'm still looking for in its entirety. I think it's. Well, I don't even know if we have a, a full current version of it. I'm pretty sure we have an original version, but it has been amended several times. So I don't know. But yeah, I have some ideas for how to raise revenue with some economic development, so we can cover that in a future council session. Um, the other thing to cover here, historical data um, on your uh, LB30, the last page of it, there's an item called special payments, and there are two line items we call unitemized balance correction, which is a very spooky word that doesn't really sound uh, like it was in excellent order. Um, basically what happened there, uh, the LB30. Uh, so the... At the back of your... Okay, I was looking at historical data. Oh yeah, so I did, I did write it down in there too. Um, everywhere. So the accountant and the auditor now are both kind of concluding that our previous long-term city administrator didn't wasn't really that familiar with the accounting software they were using, which resulted in a lot of things getting uh, recorded incorrectly. And as a result, uh, two fiscal years ago, we have an extra thirteen thousand dollars we can't account for, and last year we have an extra twenty nine thousand we can't account for. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure we noted that in the budget documents to say all this money was in there. We don't know why, but it's here. <clears throat> why doesn't our auditors catch that? Well, our auditor is catch. Whatever. I don't know how frequently we have changed auditors. Usually the best practice the state recommends is every five years, but this year the auditor is seeing a number of things that will be addressed. So at the next city council meeting, the auditor will be here, and they will go over things. Yeah. So things have been cut. Doesn't that kind of add up to $45,000? <laughs> <laughs> She's like doing the math. Well, no, that, uh, I wrote it down. That would be if it missed, because uh, this is <laughs> this is an extra. It all got spent eventually, but um, if things were all c recorded correctly, we wouldn't have an extra 13000 one year and an extra 29000 If somebody's embezzling, we have less. For some reason, we right. have more, and we don't know why, other than we can really just attribute it to QuickBooks not being used correctly. So... <sighs> Yeah, and that's uh, something our, our auditor has noted. I've, I've seen the draft reports of the audits. Again, the auditor is going to come and officially present uh, stuff at the next city council meeting. So, cool. Knows? We might have pizza and stuff at that one, too. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't have it on call during the meeting. Well, there's a lot, I guess. You can always step outside. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see what it says about that. There might be an exception. <laughs> that was an ordinance we we accepted back in 1940-something, I think. There you go. Isn't that right, Roger? So, I don't know, but our signs on there said no smoking or alcoholic beverage oh, in the park. So, uh, you guys squished it. Did you say no skateboarding, too? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, it says, It shall be unlawful for any person to be found in an intoxicated or drunken condition on any street or in any public place. <laughs> so you can't get drunk, is the rule. Oh. You can have one. I might have violated that a time or two in the past. I Whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
It's been around here a long time. I know I bothered to feed him if he was down quite a bit. I should have shut this damn thing off. I know I should have. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that is the the end of the budget document. So we did have everything filled out in the appropriate forms, of course. Um, those were all yeah. given to you. They're also put Go on down. there. The one uh, form we will be looking over at this meeting specifically. You all received a copy of it. It is the LB one. Uh, there was one change that had to be made uh, in the uh, financial summary. So this bottom uh, spreadsheet column there. The numbers for uh, the FTEs um, expenses that were paid. Uh, as well as the um, the time that was spent, the FTE per uh, per year had been uh, incorrectly inputted in the first version of the spreadsheet you were handed. So the one you were all handed today is the correct version. So if we move to adopt the budget, this is what you will be officially be voting on. Sharing with my head questions on the back of the handout that you gave us, the notice yeah. uh, there'll be one. Yeah. The debtedness, other borrowings, that's tractor, the 34050. Yeah. Oh. So where is it? Oh, well, I mean, I guess that's the, here and there. Where's the mistake in the FTE song? Um, Cause it well, basically one, they weren't all entered every year. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. And then, so you got a percentage going here. Yeah, and okay. then I think when I originally inputted this, um, so the, the rule for how the city recorder was paid wasn't uh, made clear to me or even to the accountant um, up until like a month ago. Um, so uh, I was operating for a while under, she, we were both operating under incorrect uh, information about uh, how much of my wages okay. were supposed to come from which fund. So gotcha. officially I'm 60% in admin, but it had been like, Almost evenly split 30, between. 30, 30 so it's it's thing. changed by a few decimal points, I believe. Okay, that's what you were talking about earlier about going 60% in 2020, yeah. whatever. Yep. Got it. So, yeah. That's that. All right, what does your cheat sheet say next? Um, so, public testimony. All people wishing to testify, please remember to give your name and address for the record. Do any other people wish to testify for or against adopting the budget for the next fiscal year 2022-2023? And just so we know, this question is for members of the public. Which okay. okay. Uh, so <laughs> and then we're going to close the public hearing. Uh, you'll have to ask if anybody wants to testify in rebuttal. Okay, I know there hasn't been any. Does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal to any testimony that has been offered? Okay. Okay, so before I close or continue, the public hearing is there. And if any additional from council member questions from council members or of staff or of anyone that has testified? Okay, and then once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff may speak. Public testimony is over. Thank you, Gabby. I read the last one. Uh, Council makes a motion to adopt. Somebody has to move. Um, I'm I move. To adopt the, sorry, you move to approve the budget I for. I move to approve the budget for as presented to the Budget Committee and Council. My name is Peggy Bishop. Where, I, I got that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want my address? I'm good. <laughs> and I'll second. second. Okay. Well, have, usually the chair isn't making or seconding motions. So oh. we'll just have you, you'll be the one that seconds officially. Oh, okay. Well. And then chair asks committee members to vote by roll call. Yeah. All right. Uh, President, sorry, Chair Lewis. You are Committee Chair Lewis, so you're yeah. the first. You're going to ask. I'm calling the budget by oh, roll. Oh, okay. Call. Call. roll call. So, yeah. So, I committee mm -hmm. chair. Say yes or no. Yes or no. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you, you just called you, yeah. you yeah. just yeah. called for a roll call vote, so oh. now I'm, I'm conducting that as the recorder. So, uh, first you person on the roll call is Budget Committee Chair Lewis. Please accept or deny the budget. I accept. Accept. <laughs> uh, Mayor Perry? I accept. Council President Oliveris? I accept. Uh, Councilor Hensley? Accept it. Councillor Lewis? I accept. Councillor Jackman? I abstain. 
Uh, budget committee member Parsons. I accept. Budget committee member uh, Parsons. Sorry, uh, Bishop. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, two of us. <laughs> I accept it. And uh, budget committee member Morales. I accept. Uh, the motion passes, uh, Madam Chair. Cool. Well, that's that. Can so we be done? Yeah. Then we can that's do that. only oh, one motion. meeting we had to There's do. to be a motion for, to it. Oh, yeah. council members that are here real quick, thank you very much for voting to get the radio read system. It is going to be a big help for a lot of things. And if any of you are interested in seeing how it works or checking it out, just let me know. I, cool. I, I'm going to be doing a reading at least once a week. <coughs> I did one today. It took 28 minutes. Wow. 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 It did a, it did a wow. day and a half today. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I think is really cool what you showed me the other day was the simple fact that if you come up with a leak, it throws a flag up and it tells it. Wow. And he goes, he I just, want to see it. Yeah. I mean, he just came down and said, I think we must ought to go for a, a tour of the toilet room in your house. So, was that my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was your house. Oh, that's an inconsistency. It wasn't my house. No, that's, that's what he came up with. Right. Uh, uh, I committee, heard everything uh, on the uh, committee chair. We need you to entertain a motion and I don't to adjourn. I all yet. I'm getting yeah. trained on it. And I'm going to make it happen. I'm curious if it's... So, so, if you have a girl, shut him up. Excuse me. Well, our new neighbors. Attention. Not our other neighbors. Oh, if you can hear me clap you once, if you can hear me clap twice, if you can hear me clap three times. Attention, attention. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the budget committee chair has entertained a motion to adjourn. I second it. Okay. Are we I That was easy. Before that. All in favor? Uh, yeah. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No vote yes. Alex, do you want to talk about... Um, you're going to be looking into how we're going to handle